Tyler here with TT Productions. And today, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to properly check your exposure prior to filming or taking photographs so your images don't look like blown out albino dog poop when you get them in post. The reasoning for this video is I posted a Sony A6400 48 hour 10,000 subscriber challenge yesterday. I think I pulled like seven subs in the last 16 hours. One of the reasons why might be because I completely screwed up my lighting. And if you watch the video, linked above, you'll be like, dude, why would I get an A6400 from you? To correct that, from now on, I'm going to make sure I do my due diligence and use some of these methods to check my exposure prior to filming and save me a lot of trouble in post. The first method and probably simplest is to go into your camera settings and look for Zebra. Turn this on and what will happen is anytime there is an overexposed area in your frame or shot, you will get zebra stripes across the screen. To do this, you just find zebra in your camera settings. You're going to select it. And me personally, I like to set it at 100. As you can see, the zebra lines indicate that certain parts like these mountains are blown out and they're not going to look good when I get them on the computer. To correct this, you have a couple different options. If you're just doing photography, the simplest one is to just increase your shutter speed. As you go from 1 50th a second up to say 1 2,000th two thousandth of a second, you'll notice that the zebra lines go away. If you're shooting video and really don't wanna mess with the shutter speed, you can also change your camera's aperture. To do this on the Sony a6300, you can see the zebra lines there. I am just going to turn my aperture wheel and that's gonna take it from like a wide open f1.4 and you see when we get down to 3.2, boom. Zebra lines are gone, completely. Now let's take it one step further. Say you're shooting video and you wanna keep the constant shutter speed at 1 50th of a second to match up with your 24 frames per second frame rate, which without getting too technical, creates a correct motion blur so that things look smooth and cinematic. I also like to keep my aperture wide open at f1.4. By doing this, when you lock onto your subject, it's going to create a really, really sweet shallow depth of field. That gives you that really nice bokeh effect where everything is blurred out in the background and just really increases production value and makes it look cinematic. In this scenario, with the constant shutter speed and constant aperture, to get rid of your zebra lines, you are going to lower your ISO. Without getting too technical, your ISO number is essentially correlated to how sensitive your sensor in your camera is going to be to light. So the lower your ISO number, around 100, means that it's not very sensitive in the sense that it's going to get all the good raw image that it's seeing and it's not going to introduce noise and grain into your photos and videos. When you increase that number, say to like 6400 ISO, that sensor becomes much more sensitive, which helps you when shooting in low light conditions because it really tries to grab as much light as possible, but at the expense of image quality. And it's going to introduce that noise or that grade where it just doesn't look super crisp. If you got the zebra lines, the idea is to lower your ISO, which is going to increase your image detail as well. So that's always good. And try and get it so that you get a good, evenly exposed image. Fourthly, and my personal favorite, especially when shooting outdoors. To maintain my shutter speed, as well as my aperture, and if I wanna keep that ISO on auto, I can take a variable ND filter, like this, and throw it on the end of the camera. This is basically like sunglasses, 
and you can spin the outside ring and as you spin it you can see it gets darker and lighter so you slap this thing on and you just tweak that until your zebra lines are gone and you got a properly exposed shot. The second method, and also relatively quick and easy, is to pull up your camera's histogram. What you're looking for here is a nice balanced shot here on your histogram. As you can see, as you start bringing in those zebra lines, it's going to shift to your white side. Again, that's not good. So to correct it, you just use the methods that I said earlier. Histogram, zebra lines, A6300, shooting on an A6500, got an A6400 coming tomorrow, and been sitting on pins and needles waiting for Sony to announce the Sony A7000, which is supposed to be uh, redonkulous. Do yourself a favor. Click on the link above or in the description or somewhere. Type in A6400 giveaway. You'll find it. I'm going to call it er, about 28 hours left to go from 125 subscribers to 10,000. Crazier things have happened. And my heart won't be broken if you guys can't pull it off. Because guess what? Then I get to keep the camera. It's rainbows and butterflies all day, baby. I win. What? Until next time. Keep on keeping on.